The Purple Line is a community podcast, bringing you in-depth conversations with diverse leaders in the public and private sectors. Whether you're a student looking to gather advice or a professional tuning in for valuable resources, our dynamic programming provides tips for all ages and backgrounds. I'm your host, Keith Fernandez, and this is The Purple Line. The Honorable Lincoln Diaz Ballard practices international law in Miami, Florida, and is chairman and founder of the Congressional Hispanic Leadership Institute in Washington, D.C. He was born in Havana, Cuba to Rafael Lincoln and Hilda Caballero Diaz Ballard. His father served as the majority leader of the Cuban House of Representatives. Lincoln Diaz Ballard attended high school at the American School of Madrid, Spain. He received a degree in international relations from the New College of Florida and obtained a diploma in British politics in Cambridge, England. He received his law degree from Case Western Reserve University. He was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1992, serving Florida's 21st Congressional District after serving in the Florida House and Florida Senate. He served as a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee during his first term. In 1994, Lincoln Dews Ballard became the first Hispanic person to be named to the powerful House Rules Committee. He took historic pieces of legislation to the House floor for passage, including the legislation creating the Department of Homeland Security and the 25-year extension of the Voting Rights Act. He was the author of the Nicaraguan Adjustment in Central American Relief Act of 1997, NACARA, which granted legal residency to hundreds of thousands of immigrants in the United States who were previously at risk for deportation. He retired from Congress in January 2011 and continues to serve Chile as its chairman. Chairman Lincoln diaz Bellar, thank you for joining us on the Purple Line. Uh, this is kind of a back to the future moment for me. I am a Chile intern from back in the day, and I remember um, Chile like being brand new in 2003. Yeah, amazing. And amazing, amazing stuff. Um, and what's always stood out to me um, about Chile and about you specifically is the fact that you have always been able to be a leader in Congress, a leader in the community, and you've lived um, your life in a way that is in service to others. You know, you passed major legislation like NACARA, um, stood up for Cuban democracy, you know, really a leading voice in Congress, the leading voice in Congress on the issue of Cuba, um, and in a bipartisan way that brought people together. Um, and I'd love to start that off because nowadays you see a lot of folks, you know, saying, well, politics or public service is such a dangerous space to be in, but you were able to bridge the divide. And so when it comes to life lessons around helping people bridge the gap and whether you're a corporate leader, whether you're, you know, thinking about getting into public service or even just in your everyday life, what are some life lessons that you were able to draw from that bipartisan leadership that interns and others can apply in their everyday lives? Well, Keith, it's such a privilege to be on your, on your program. And we're so proud of you. You know, talking about examples, yeah. you know, you're an example of a young leader who's already accomplished so much and is continuing to accomplish much. So as an example, yeah. we're very proud of you. We're Thank proud you. of you. I'm very you. proud of uh, uh, our friendship with you yeah. and known you for some years now. Yeah. You're very young, but uh, I, uh, we go back already yeah. some years. Y y you talk about... The bipartisan, bipartisan aspect of Chile, I'm very proud of. It's yeah. very difficult to achieve. Yeah. But I think that we've been able to achieve it in, in Chile because we, you know, like my father used to, stay, used to say, you have to differentiate between the fundamental and the secondary. Mm -hmm. On the fundamental, and in the case of Chile, the, the, the reason we're, be able, we're able to become, an, as we become an island, a meeting ground. Yeah of divergent points of view yeah. is because in essence, you know, there are three dictatorships in this hemisphere. Yeah. They're communist dictatorships. Yeah. If you feel opposition, if you're opposed to those dictatorships and you feel that with passion, yeah. you're gonna feel comfortable at Chile. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a liberal or conservative, if you're a Democrat or a Republican, if you are genuinely pro-freedom, pro-democracy, and anti-dictatorship, Chile's fine for you. It's kind of, the secret's out. Uh, that's what makes it possible for us to unite very divergent points of view. There's extraordinary disagreement on multiple issues within the board yeah. in Chile, within the congressional board, but on those issues that we were talking about, freedom, 
and the support for freedom and the opposition to the dictatorships, especially in this hemisphere. Uh, there's strength of thought, of, there's passion, uh, and that brings us together and allows for us to, without, without denying the differences, working together. And I'm so glad you brought up these issues that are fundamental, human rights, opposition to dictatorships. And I think that one of the hallmarks of your time in Congress and his service um, as chair of Chile is the fact that you have never given up your zealous advocacy for a position and you've built those bridges. Yeah. And, and you've been honored, I mean, that we've got a lot of awards here, the Order of Ruben Darío in the Great Cross from the president of Nicaragua, um, the president of El Salvador, the Republic of Lithuania. And you've done so in a way that um, has only strengthened your position and the position of the issue you're advocating for, whether that be democracy in Cuba and throughout the hemisphere, whether that be for the South Florida community, um, or really whether that be for Hispanic young men and women who are Chile interns. How did you keep um, zealous advocacy at the core of what you did while still building coalitions that were helpful and that advance the narrative. Uh, sometimes I think folks say, oh, I've got to compromise, um, but you never did. What you did was bring people into the tent. Well, again, you have to differentiate between the fundamental and the secondary. Yeah. My father used to say that 98% of what we deal with yeah. is secondary, yeah. where you can compromise. And you have to continuously compromise, not only negotiate, but compromise. On the 2%, on the fundamental, which is related to value, values, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what you stand for, what you believe in deeply in your heart. There's no compromise there. And people respect that because they know what you stand for and where you're coming from. I remember so many times people coming to me and saying, constituents, uh, voters, I don't agree on every, every vote of yours, but I know where you're coming from mm. and I support that. And I thank you for where you're coming from and what you stand for, despite occasional disagreements. Uh, I regret even some votes I took here, but they weren't on the fundamental. Mm -hmm. They were on the 98% yeah. on the secondary. And I, I think the concentration on the fundamental, realizing that there's always going to be disagreement, but on the fundamental, there's got to be agreement. Yeah. That's what makes Chile possible. And in the process of making Chile possible, we've been able to help hundreds of young people touch their lives in such impressive, important ways. Um, you, as the president of the Alumni Association, you, know, you're, uh, you come into contact continuously with the extraordinary success stories of the people who have come through Chile. Their lives were changed by Chile. Uh, and they've gone on to extraordinary careers. Uh, so it's such a privilege and an honor for us to have been able to touch those lives, affect those lives. In so many cases from uh, families where they were the first ones to go to college, the Chile interns. Uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, something that we were very proud of having been able, been able to be a part of. Uh, and the larger spectrum I just want to put in a good word for public service. Yeah. Um, gonna, success in the private sector is marvelous. But let me tell you, the satisfaction that you get from public service, from being able to help people through public service, is unmatched. Rare is, you mentioned NACARA, the Nicaraguan Adjustment and Central American Relief Act, which really has been the only major immigration reform since the great reform of 1986. Yeah. Almost 500,000 people who were facing deportation received green cards and now are mostly American citizens because of that law. Yeah. And rare is the month. It used to be rare is, the, rare is the week, but certainly rare is the month that someone doesn't come up to me yeah. to say, I'm a Nakara beneficiary, or my father, or my mother, my parents, or my grandparents were Nakara beneficiaries, yeah. and, and thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and that's just an extraordinary sense of satisfaction 
that really you can't replicate uh, anywhere else. I remember in 2008, this is how long we've known each other, when you were running for re-election and um, people would come up to you and they would yeah. say that. And, and to me, it was just such a testament to the value of public service. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons that I think Chile is so impactful, um, it's a relatively young organization still. Um, and so it's had an outsized impact. Yeah. And when you talk about these accomplishments and the principles that you're instilling in the next generation, um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of the, one of the original Chile interns from early in the day, but how is, how important is it for us to instill these values in future generations and how important is it for organizations and people to really live this life of public service, whether that public service is in your neighborhood, you know, as a member of, you know, the, the PTA or whether that's going and running for office, um, how vital is Chile's mission to ensuring that there's diversity of thought in the Hispanic community going forward? Well, I think Chile represents yeah. and manifests yeah. the fact that the Hispanic community is not monolithic. Yeah. Uh, the diversity per se uh, is Chile. Yeah. Uh, we genuinely include divergent, often opposed points of view, but working together yeah. under the umbrella of the fundamental issues that unite us, the values that unite us. Um, but you mentioned something that's so true. In a free society, you don't have to run for office to serve. Mm -hmm. You can serve as a private citizen, mm -hmm. whether it be through NGOs, you know, the, pub, the uh, nonprofit, the nonprofit se in the sector. Um, there's just so many ways to serve. You can serve in multiple ways in a free society. You don't, you don't have to be in, in politics. But a very important way yeah. and effective way to serve is through politics. Yeah. You know, politics doesn't exist in dictatorships. The first thing that dictators do is eliminate politics. Yeah. They hate politics. Yeah. And, you know, I always learned that as a child. Uh, politics may not seem perfect. It's never going to be perfect. There's no human endeavor that's perfect. But it's where there's freedom, yeah. there's politics. Where there's politics, there's freedom. Where there's dictatorship, yeah. there's no politics. So politics, you know, we talked about the legislation that I was able to work on and so many other legislative accomplishments, which are, you know, I'm so proud of, but to have been a part of, Remember, you, you can't do anything unless you have the majority of your colleagues on board. Yeah. There's no one-man show yeah. in politics. Yeah. When you have an idea and you're able to make that, make that idea a reality, it's because you've convinced a majority of your colleagues yeah. of both houses that it's a good reality, yeah. something worthwhile doing. So uh, democracy is beautiful. It's not perfect. Uh, but uh, where there is no politics, there is dictatorship. Where there's dictatorship, there's no politics. I, I'm glad you brought that up and, and the, the essential nature of public service. Um, and, you know, your, your father, Rafael diaz Bolart, was a titan in Cuban history, founded La Rosa Blanca. Um, and I, I got one small part of that when I went to uh, Rafael diaz Bolart Hall at FIU Law. Uh, and I was visited there there for like a semester and I just you know I saw all of the great documents and and all of that how essential was it to you um you know you were born in Cuba um and to really advocate for democracy in Cuba in the hemisphere and I think that for many people who are not from South Florida many people who do not have that experience of losing your homeland um how formative was it in ensuring that you ran for office and were able to shape the debate around that and advocate for human rights um around the world frankly whereas perhaps some others may not have you know my, my father was a great teacher I think the one of the greatest things about his teaching, his mentoring, was that he never told me what I needed to do. Yeah. You know, you, you need to be a lawyer, you need yeah. to be a politician. No, yeah. no, no. Uh, he always stressed what we were talking about before, you can serve yeah. in many, many ways. Yeah. The important thing is to do what, what is your calling. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he was a great teacher. He's a great teacher. You know, there's an interesting combination of he was an erudite, student of mm. history, yeah. 
he was a fighter. Yeah. Notice that his memoir uh, is titled, I mean, it's not his name. It's Cuba, Intrahistoria, Cuba, Intrahistory, the concept from Unamuno in Spain, the intrahistory that you learn through the intimacy of conversation and of action yeah. uh, as an actor yeah. in history. Una lucha sin tregua, an, the unremitting, an unremitting struggle. Yeah. That was his memoir. And uh, so I learned much from him. I think the, the combination of the fact that he was a fighter and a student of history, and at the same time, he studied at some point early in his life to be a preacher. Yeah. Uh, he wow. studied it. He, he got a, a scholarship to the Princeton Theological Seminary. Yeah. He was only there one year because he discovered during that year that that was not his calling. He, he discovered that politics was his calling. Uh, but uh, you know, he always had a tremendous amount of faith, as my mother did as well. And they transmitted that. Yeah. And I'm very grateful, very grateful for that transmission of faith, which is the most important thing in life. Yeah. If you have faith, you know, you, you know you're not alone. Yeah. Uh, and that anything is possible. I think that that's absolutely right. And, and really reflecting on the circumstances of your life and leadership, you know, losing your homeland, um, and then really reestablishing your, yourself and your family in the United States, you know, your parents brought you and, you know, your brother Mario still serves in Congress. Um, and then deciding to run for office, Florida House, Florida Senate, U.S. Congress, um, rising to become a major leader in Congress. Um, these things were not predetermined. Yeah. You had to you had to work really hard to make them possible, yeah. and you had to really have a strategic view of the not just political landscape, but your personal landscape and what you wanted to do. And I think that one of the things that certainly a lot of interns and young people are wondering is, well, what what made you do that? What life lessons did you draw from that? And and why was it so important to serve um, in this capacity to make sure you gave back to your community? Again, there are many ways to be able to serve. Right. In my case, I knew I wanted to run for office, yeah. and I didn't know if I was going to win. Yeah. I mean, in other words, you, you never know beforehand if you're going to be successful. Yeah. You know, I, I come across some people that they say they always knew they were going to be successful in yeah. every way, and you know that they, they were going to win their elections. Yeah. They always knew that. I didn't know that, but I knew that I was going to try. Yeah. That I was going to give it my all, and so hard work is the ingredient. Hard work. And doing something for the right reason, the right reason being service. Yeah. Uh, not to serve yourself, but to serve others. That's a really important distinction in politics. You know, there are people that are in politics to serve themselves. Mm -hmm. They become millionaires yeah. out of their yeah. uh, public office. One thing that I was always proud of in our family is that we believe in service in politics as service to others, yeah. not to ourselves, to ourselves. And so that was something I learned and then carried out through hard work, but you never know beforehand if you're, if you're going to succeed. What you can know yeah. is you're going to work really hard and you're going to do everything you can to try to succeed. And then if, and if you achieve office, to use that office for service to others. That's, that's a wonderful, wonderful life lesson. And just to close this out, Chile is coming up on its 20-year anniversary pretty soon. Hard to believe because it feels like just yesterday. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it really is. Of all of these years and to many more, um, do you have a favorite memory of Chile, um, either impacting interns, you know, some, some briefing you were able to hold, or just um, really 20 years of an organization that's grown by leaps and bounds and has made really outsized impact um, is staggering in such a great way. Um, and so I was wondering if there's anything that um, stands out to you reflecting on 20 years of service with Chile uh, as to what the organization has been able to do and what it can continue to do. First, the fact that for some years, I would say three, four years, it was a thought yeah. before it was a reality. Uh, a number of us thought it was important to create an idea of uh, uh, an organization of true diversity of thought. Um, 
And then after those three, four years of thinking about it, I remember Mario got elected yeah. in 2002. And for Eliana and for, for me, that was a really important development. We were three now yeah. uh, from South Florida. And we, we, had, we had thought about Chile for some years. We realized it was time to do it. And so what's been most satisfying, really extraordinary, is to see the lives that have been touched, to meet the young people whose lives were touched by Chile. There was no way to know beforehand who those young people were going to be yeah. or how many there were going to be, but they're spe spectacular. Yeah. The, the Chile, former Chile interns, the current Chile interns, um, spectacular human beings. You know, we had the great tragedy of losing Wendy Martinez. Yeah. Wendy was an example of just an unbelievable leader. Yeah. We yeah. knew that she had a, uh, a future that was simply without limit. Yeah. And she was taken from us in a tragedy here, just jogging in the streets of Washington one day, wow. which points out, you know, do your part, work hard. You never know for how long you're here. Yeah. I think Wendy is an example of that. Uh, but while you're here, like Wendy, do good and do it well. And so the, the most incredible part of Chile for me and the most satisfying part has been just the, the, the human beings whose lives we've been able to touch and who then inspire us through their lives. That, that marvelous aspect of Chile is the most satisfying. I can tell you on a, on a personal note, without you, without Chile, without Eliana, I definitely would not be here. You've changed my life and you've changed so many lives. Um, there, was an, there was an intern who his first time on a plane was coming to his Chile internship. Uh, so this has really changed so many lives in so many ways. And uh, we're all honored and grateful that back 20 years ago, before any of us had any concept of what we would be doing in our lives, that you were thinking about us already. So thank you, Chairman Lincoln diaz Villart, for joining us on the Purple Line. Thank you. And thank uh, you. you honor us. Well, I, I'm honored because you thought of us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Purple Line. You can follow me at underscore Keith Fernandez on Twitter. And make sure to follow Chili across all social media platforms at The Chili for the latest updates. 